My name is Marc Delevan. I was born in Belgium and graduated uh, from the University of Liège in 1966. And those were uh, great times in medicine. Heart surgery had started less than 10 years before, and for the first time, uh, doctors and physiologists had been able to replace the heart and the lungs for a period of time to mend the heart and repair it. Also, one year after my graduation, Christian Barnard had performed a heart, lung, the heart transplantation in Cape Town, South Africa, which makes medicine renewed and very exciting. I must say, one of the days I remembered vividly before deciding to become a heart surgeon was a conference given by Professor Dubos from Paris, who had done the first heart transplant in France and was talking about the patient and the results of this transplant. The first thing you need, I believe, is passion. I have never seen a good heart surgeon who didn't have a passion for what he or she does. And I think the best surgeons are those who have both the technical skills and the mental skills. You should be able to tolerate high emotions and obviously you can have a tendency to overreact when you have a good success and overreact when you have a failure. The mental readiness is really very important for a good surgeon. The most difficult thing uh, for me has been to cope with the death of a child after an operation. Obviously, when I started heart surgery, for some conditions, the mortality was more than 20%. Obviously, now the mortality is much lower, and the next generation of heart surgeons has the advantage of not having to go through learning curves, which in the early days of cardiac surgery was very painful. But the future is always unknown. The progresses made in 30 years have been enormous, and there is no reason to believe that progress will not continue in the future. But I believe that emerging technologies, like nanotechnology, for example, may become important in the mending of some cardiovascular conditions. The same applies to, to the stem cell research, for example, which may uh, lead to new treatments for heart failures. So I think that the potential for major changes in the treatment of cardiovascular defects is enormous for the future and very enthusiastic, actually. What are my greatest satisfactions? The first one is, without any doubt, <coughs> to have had the privilege to help so many children. Number two is to have had the opportunity to train many doctors who are now doing the same job in many countries, in particular in Italy. I think that uh, Professor Menicanti and uh, Professor Frigiola have built up one of the best renowned units in cardiac surgery not only in Europe, but maybe perhaps in the world as well. My greatest satisfactions in terms of research has been my association with the Politecnico di Milano, where I uh, collaborated very closely with uh, Dr. Dubini and uh, Mick Gavaka, actually since 1993. That has been a very successful collaboration. It is a good example of what we call now the translational research, where basic researchers and clinicians work together and try to help each other in solving a complex problem. That has been very rewarding. Well, they apply their technology called computational free dynamics. They make mathematical models of the circulation of the vessels in the heart, and we can make virtual operations, test their efficiency with the computation, and then apply them to uh, patients. And that has allowed us to refine the technique of repairing very complex hearts. And again, those modifications have been adapted worldwide. No? So that collaboration has been very exciting and uh, very successful. Well, I became interested in human errors, well, for two reasons. The first one is I have always been interested and intrigued by death following surgery. Whatever the circumstances, are, when a patient dies after surgery, the surgeon has expresses a mixture of sadness and guilt, even if there is no mistakes, no component from, of their thought 
in that contribution of those days. And following that, I embarked into a very large scale study where I engaged human factor experts to watch surgeons and surgical teams performing and find out what the human factors impact were on those outcomes. A delicate question to ask a surgeon about his personal life. As I said at the beginning, I think the first qualification is passion. If you have a passion, you spend a lot of time for it and you give it priority. So inevitably, our families, I think, have suffered from this. And it is hope that in the future, surgeons will be able to keep their passion and also to dedicate, dedicate enough time to their family. I think it's a wish for the next generation. And uh, I think the field remains uh, to be discovered. Uh, many, many things remain to be discovered. And uh, we need new, a new generation who keep the same enthusiasm for creation, creativity, for research, in spite of the difficulties imposed by management and bureaucracy. So it's a great field. My future, in terms of surgeons or a human being, well, since I retired from my position at Great Ormond Street, I become more involved in uh, humanitarian activities. Actually, my mentor in that is behind you, is Sandro Frigiola, whose uh, accomplishments in that field has been outstanding. And uh, I've been inspired by him, and I like to do the same. This is my friend, Alessandro Frigiola. <laughs> we met for the first time in 1974, and since then we have helped each other. I'm uh, trying to spend my retirement learning from him what to do in the third world. It's been a very exciting association.